What's that? Is that Chris in the back of your car? No, that's Chris's robot. He got that. It's watching YouTube videos. They say money And the breaking news it appears that Western states have accepted a ceasefire. Ugh, I'm calling him now. Where is he? The sheriff's office that 37-year-old Morris Plumont is one of the several people investigators. And God will come down upon the sodomites and the liberals! Reach! Not one extra inch when you touch behind that, that knee or the ankle will make all the difference in the world. When they're stuffing your head down, I want to see Reese. Reese, like your life depends on it, because it just might. If I try, agree. That's why I try. Chance I have when I'm down here, because I want everything I do idiot-proof, because I'm an idiot, and my brain is an old computer. It's almost an abacus, and it can only handle a few simple things at a time. So I want to have one stance that I slightly adapt to whatever environment I'm in. Whether that's a street fight, which I don't, those don't really happen anymore, because I choose not to do them, most fights are by choice. Uh, a, a jiu-jitsu competition, judo competition, wrestling competition, MMA, sparring around on the ground. I want to have that same basic stance everywhere. So pretty much the, the same way I'm up here, I'm down here. I don't want to relax everything and flatten out. Because <laughs> that's just the plain bad habit all the time. So if I shrimp like this, it'll never work, ever. So I'm, I, I'm here in my stance, I'm going to reach back with my foot, I'm, I'm in what I call prayer, and I don't even believe, but I pray. I'm right here, I'm slightly shrugged, the chin's protected, I reach back with the foot as far back as I can, grab the mat like I'm a monkey, I shift onto my side towards my knee, flattening this leg so I can drag it through whatever it needs to be dragged through. I shrimp to one side and I'm lifting my lazy hips off of the mat and sending them away. My hands are almost still like I'm a mine. I'm not pushing him away. I'm bracing, establishing architectural structure, lifting my hip, and moving myself away. Make sense? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Just put my hands down and get down, because that's a, a bad habit too, right? I'm gonna but keep my hands down. up. Go ahead and stop shrimping. Watch what we're doing. Oh, sorry guys, I thought they were done. I'm here, look. My rear hand comes in if I'm gonna reach. I'm putting back here. It's kind of like the capoeira, right? That rear hand makes that reach. I'm reaching back. So when I'm down here, I'm in a high shrimp. I'm gonna back up once. Back up twice, I'm gonna stand back up. And I'm gonna do just this side because I don't, I'm not sure if my knee will go pop. So I'm here, look, I'm moving my hands back, I'm pulling my head away, and I'm just gonna reach back, move into my shrimp. You do two high shrimps, stand back up. Go in a bit, in a bit, and I'll probably run over. So think of this as the boring opening act. 
All right, so I'm here. I'm in my same stance as when I'm standing, right? I don't want to have that, oh, I'm on the ground thing going on. I want to have my same combat stance. My hip tilt, everything, my hands are up. I'm going to shrimp this side, come back, shrimp the other side, come back, bridge, walk backwards, rise, rise, and get up. Can you remember that? Your brains are smarter than mine, I would have forgotten. <laughs> shrimp, shrimp, bridge, fast, rapid, backing up in that bridge. I shrimp, I shrimp, I shrimp, I shrimp. Get up. Crouch, I'm going to wiggle my body, rocking my hips. I'm going to rapidly move myself down the mat. Except for me, usually I go in a circle. <laughs> it's okay too. And then I'm going to switch back, and if you go in a circle, that's fine. I switch back, and I'm going to get myself down that mat. As fast as my hips and abs will allow. I may even move myself around the mat a little bit. Got it? Yes, sir. So the forms of a low base, and we'll hit that um, later. There's on the balls of your feet here, which makes me from here down more actionable, but it, it leaves this pretty out of balance, so I have to counter that often with athletics. As a general rule, if the guard's open, I can be here. If the guard's closed, I want to be here. As a general rule, or I'm in a stack. But I'm here, I'm going to practice rocking up on my base where I do this. I'm just rocking up on the base. <coughs> and if you're young and have some spring in your step, use as little hand as you possibly can. And you're going to rock up. And then you're going to rock the back foot down. I'm going to stick my hand underneath. My legs come around. I'm just going to come back up. So I'm here, I'm rocking, coming back up. Rocking, coming back up. <coughs> roll that through, right? That little loosen your head roll, right? Rocking, coming back up. And go break camp, right? <laughs> rocking, coming back up. Got that? Yeah. Warm your body up that a little bit. It's really good at boxing. I was a guy who was not. I was a natural grappler. My instinct always as a kid was to close the space and grab. I would hang around guys whose instinct was to never let them close and hit. And as kids, you a fight all the time, right? At least if you have a healthy childhood. <laughs> so. I didn't really, I had to force myself to learn how to box, whereas the grappling arts came much more natural. But the grappling arts allowed me to actually understand the boxing. And the first thing we'll do is what I call the absolute worst stance you could possibly have in a fight, MMA, with Jiu Jitsu, Judo, UFC, Boxing, Muay Thai. I want everybody like this. I want you to lift your toes off of the mat so you're on your heels. I want you to arch your back and stick your ass out like J-Lo. I want you to stick your chin ahead. I want you to hold your hands like this and walk around. This is your shittiest ready stance in a fight, right? You couldn't get worse than this. <laughs> Okay, good. Oddly, oddly enough, a lot of our instincts say this is what we do. It's the same instinct as when you're punching at me, I want to look down and windmill. It's an instinct that we all have to override. And it's a strong instinct is to look away when you're either being punched, kicked, or grabbed. It is an instinctive thing. So, we're going to undo it. Everybody parallel feet. Like you're on skis. 
Okay? Now remember, this is a learning tool. I'm not saying it's your stance. Okay, we're on skis. If I start veering out, that's not good on skis, right? I could snow plow inward, but I don't want to move out. I'm going to start with moving on the balls here of my feet. Where I'm moving on the balls of my feet. Now I'm going to grab my ass. I'm going to do a forward pelvic tilt. Are there any minors in here? Yes. Yeah. You're old enough. <laughs> Are there any virgins in here? <laughs> You'll figure it out. <laughs> you do a forward pelvic tilt like the in stroke of your fuck. <laughs> Pardon the language. And you maintain that forward pelvic tilt, balls deep, and don't pull out. My butt cheeks are holding a quarter in between my ass. I'm going to take a slight lead step now. So I've set my hips. And I'm going to relax everything up here. Get this all relaxed. I'm going to raise my rear heel off of the mat. And I'm going to add more forward pelvic tilt. Right here. And I'm going to feel my hips moving around in pelvic tilt. Give me a minute. Put your hands behind your back. We'll close your eyes. Big pelvic tilt. Big pelvic tilt. If I punch you, walk into me. Close your eyes. Walk into me. Walk into me. Running. Running. Run me down. Run me down. Stop. Close your eyes. Arch your back up. Arch it. No, like the bad way. <laughs> Big arch. <sighs> your hands want to reach really bad. This will keep your brain from wanting but to reach down. You cannot think yourself into good habits. You cannot say, I'm going to keep my hands up and have your hips bad. You will naturally put your hands down. You have to have your hips right. So you don't have to even think, I'm going to have my hands down. It's not your gut that moves it, it's your hips. Right? So hold that stance, and we're over exaggerating it. It doesn't mean the entire fight you're going to walk like this. <laughs> it means we're over exaggerating the emphasis of forward a pelvic tilt. Just like when we throw a punch, we emphasize that the hips lead the hand. If I grab your gi, I want to grab with my hip. I want to feel just like a punch. I, not this. There's no hip here. I want to feel my hip grab that clock. Right? I want to know everything is backed up with my hip, including my punch and my grip. Right? Boom. Okay? Work that out a little bit. So adjust that stance. Ideally, uh, <laughs> I, ideally, I'm going to try to aim my lead foot you know, right like this in a line. My lead leg. So whether it's a, it, it's a kick leg, an injury into a shot leg, whatever it is, I want to have this lead leg in a ready stance to do, just like a jab. My rear spring load is ready to spring, and it's like a coiled spring that wants to leap into action. I want to leap this leg into action, right? And you're almost a puppet moving around on strings. God's telling me to leap into action. I'm holding back. I'm I like the drama. No, I, I won't. Now, <laughs> this habit starts. This is a terrible habit. But, but, but balance beam, okay? So instead, keep that lead foot stepping out, right? When I reach and grab a grip, it, it, would this would be a good punch? No. Terrible, right? When I grab a grip, it's a punch. It's a punch. It, it, it's, I want to be from here, to there. 
and grab that grip, okay? Go. Okay, go. I'm over here. The first one I'm gonna do is a knee grip grab. The other one is a rear grip grab. When I pop out that lead, I do this is I protect my neck as I reach. I don't want to be here because then he easily comes right over the top, re-grips or right over the top, fucking punches me, right? So in here, I'm, this is protected. So I know he only has an under grip option. I want him to only have an under grip option. But before we hit that, I grip, and I'm gonna push, and then I'm gonna pull. Okay, with my rear hand, I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna grip, I'm gonna turn my hand, I'm gonna push, and then with my hip, I'm gonna pull. And I want it heavy on that foot. It's like hockey when you're moving around on skate. Right? When you make that push, I'm gonna almost like a punch. And I'm gonna pull. Okay? And pull with your hip. Just do it. I'm an ex hockey player who's a, a black belt. Whenever he's in LA, him and I train, he is like a pro hockey trainer. He makes tons of money flying around because he can grab wearing a gi on skates. So he gets these hockey guys and teaches them how to fight and whip them around with skates and launch them in. Yeah, it's badass. And he's so fucking good at it. Whatever happens, Except new white belts in the match. Where we walk out and we agree we're gonna waltz. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's pretty, right? We can have a fun dance, but it's good a teaching tool if we start this way. So please know that it's a it, it's tool. Don't walk out in your match, slap hands, and do this. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> if you do it, I'm gonna punch you in your thigh. Okay. So we grip here and here. White belts, don't pinch the fucking skin. <laughs> <laughs> if you've noticed that people don't like rolling with you, you either need to wash your fucking gi, or take a shower, or stop pinching people. <laughs> You grip cloth, and I grip it up here. The first one I'm gonna do is the twist. I twist here and here. Just a horizontal motion, moving them off his base. Just slightly, okay? The next one I'm gonna do is the pinch, where I pinch these put together, and the pop. Pinch, pop. Twist, pinch, pop. Got it? I love the pinch because I'm here, so I'm gonna pinch here hard. And then if you want to add your cool new school fucking arm bar or whatever you want to do, you can add that. Your pop, come in your shuck, hit that leg, right? So pinch, pop, my twist sets up. Boom, right? So it's this upper body. I think it was like stirring the pot. Right? You're working this around here. Got your nice independent mobile base working up here. Bam! Hit it, right? Boom! Hit it. Boom! Hit it. Okay? Let's do it. 20 years ago, I'm Greco. Even though I sure they also have me a judo. I've, I, I've done a little judo with the Olympic guys and I learned a little stuff, but really what I have is old school, pre-sport, the jiu-jitsu style jiu-jitsu is what I have. Okay, so we're here. Lift and sag, okay? My lift is my uppercut. And I'm trying to lift him off his feet because I want him like a puck. The kick me. The kick me. I'm removing the power out of that kick. My sag is I'm dropping my weight on him. The kick. Kick. <laughs> Lift. Sag. Twist. 
bitch. Right? Yeah. Lift. Sack. Lift. Sack. Lay your weight on him. Kick me. Kick me. Do it. Do it, Bryce. Kick me. Kick me. Kick me. Bryce, I told him you were Okay? Do it. Isis cuts the head off of the kitten. <laughs> That's true. But sometimes in warfare, you gotta kill the kid. <laughs> There's something that we in war we call a, a tactical retreat. Retreat is a tactic, not a strategy. Unless you're the French. <laughs> So there are times in which it is wise to do a tactical <coughs> retreat. Pull guard. But you should never feel proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to never lose my sense of shame in the 33% of matches in which I have pulled guard. Because we all pull guard, we all masturbate, we all do stuff that we should be ashamed of slightly. <laughs> okay, so if I'm gonna pull a guard, if, if I'm going to pull a guard, I am not going to pull a rape me guard, which is backing up and being raped. <laughs> I am not even gonna pull a half-ass flying rate me guard. <laughs> like I like, like I enjoy it. I am going to pull a sweep, a sneak to come on top, a joint lock, or a choke, or a back attack. So I, you, you're going to think the same four principles of when you're in guard, when you're in guard, why are you in guard? Because you somehow fucked up being on top. That's why the Muri guard. Why is guard good? Because guard neutralizes the shitty fact that you're on bottom. You're neutralizing it. The problem is the guard is fun, lazy, and rewarding. And stuff that rewards us, we're gonna repeat. And there's nothing like when you're a white belt and you get that first magical guard choke arm locker sweep where you trick that fucker into it, you got him, fair and square, and it was easy and you did it from your back. And it's addicting, right? And, but jujitsu ultimately boils down to guard and passing guard. Guard and passing guard. If you take me or any of the black belts in here and we put us in our sci-fi cloning machine and now there's two of me, when we have a match, 80% of that match is spent in guard. One of me is trying to pass, one of me is in guard but countering and but sweeping. That's the jujitsu. The other stuff is easy. A back attack is the guard on his back. If your guard is good, your back attack is good. If your guard is good, your mount is good. Because your legs are around him. And a guard in outer space is a mount. <laughs> Don't forget that. Only gravity makes it the shitty that you're on the bottom. And why? Because of weight? and the fact that it's easier to punch downward than punch upward, right? So when I pull a guard, I am pulling with intent to come on top, submit, or sweep, or grab his back, right? I'm working over here. I am pulling with a pure intent of making sure that I am somehow going to pull a top spot. It's something, a dynamic. It's 
a, oh shit, open class fight. The guy's a judo fucking black belt. And he out fucking weighs me. I'm gonna pull something as dynamic as I can, but what usually happens, but counter it, is this. So it starts looking like I'm just pulling ass. But I'm not. And if I have a chance here, I'm coming back up. Does that make sense? It's what I call a but dynamic guard pull. You might step on it, right? Grab it, grab it, grab that. I'm going, oh shit, no Tomonagi anymore. I but dynamically pull my guard. Right? Make sense? A couple times, we'll pull guard. And then we bring it on the ground. Go. Because you never invent anything. Okay? Is I'm going to walk around on one foot, and you're going to practice trying to knock me off my foot. And I'm going to use my grips, my hips, and twists to count. Yes. And you lift and sag, and twist, to count that. Because I want to know that I'm comfortable on one foot at all times. Whether it's a guard pull, a throw, I want to feel on one foot, not the off like this. I'm comfortable. And if I go, I go. Right? It's a drill. Let's do it. All of the combat sports, minus MMA, and I'll say even boxing. The grappling sports, judo, the jiu-jitsu, freestyle, collegiate, greco, sambo, all those major grappling arts become bound by the rules of the sport in the game. So why should I walk out in a jiu-jitsu match completely upright when he has a low shot? So we start playing by with the rules of the game. And you fight how you train. And because the original reason why I walked in any martial arts school I ever did, and I did all kinds of stuff. When I was a kid, karate, kung fu, boxing, wrestling, all that stuff. I ultimately want to learn how to fight with the absence of rules. Valet to the. That's what I have in my mind. And if I'm walking out here like this, that is not good in a fight. And I will fight how I train. Even if I tell myself <laughs> all the time, okay, this is just a jitsu man. And I've done this, you know, we're in this little spot here, and I'm gonna, because that's like one of my favorite shots, and I want to win the fight. And I'm gonna do everything I can within the man-made rules of the game, bending him as far as I can, cheating if I won't get caught, to win the fight. That's what humans do. That's the argument for the state. Freedom, is the argument against the state. So when I fight, I want a modified, I want the same stance that I box, grapple, shoot. I want everything to have one stance because I'm an idiot. And I want to have the same stance in my sport of grappling matches. And if I lose the fight, I don't blame it on my stance. I blame it on I need improvement of my stance. So when we slap hands, if he goes low, I'm going to adapt my same stance low. I'm not going to switch completely. I'm going to be thinking about what I call my three H's, which are hands, head, and hips, especially on the ground. Everything boils down to hands, head, and hips. Okay, so avoid this habit. If he drops, I back up slightly. If he advances, I'm gonna attack that head the same way I would need. I don't wanna counter it by matching his lead all the time. 
I want to attack his head if it's low. I would rather you guys have that habit than the wrestling habit. You know where I'm working around here, right? It's not bad, but it's not, it won't help you all that much in taking a fight. And I don't mean a real fight against the but drunk walking down the street and goes, hey, you bumped me. <laughs> Fuck you, right? That's not what I'm talking about. So, we walk out, we slap hands, go out there and fight. Even if it's like, oh, oh, the gi only, right? Fight. Attack that head. Make him have to go upright. Right? So he goes here, huh? There go, right? Stuff that head through. Control that head. Okay? Just a little bit and then we'll be on the ground. Let's go. And passing, sometimes I start a guard. As I explained earlier, really most of the Jiu Jitsu boils down to guard. If your guard is good, your mount is good, your back attack is good. If your passing is good, your top cross sides gets better because you do all that work to pass, you don't want to go right back in the guard. So ultimately, again, Jiu Jitsu boils down to guard, even though we say guard is bad. That's the paradox in this thing. Guard is fun, too. And guard is awesome. And guard guards me when I'm in that bad spot or if I'm, I have a huge, heavy opponent on top of me. So we ended up in guard. Let's first address, if I end up in his guard, if he ends up in my guard and his gi is still in his belt, then either he got a killer takedown on me right off the bat, or I chicken shit it out. Because the only way that I could end up in guard with his gi in his belt is if I pulled it like a fucking child. I'm sorry. Nothing against children. <laughs> Little shits. <laughs> I got my legs crossed here. Hands, head, and hips. Can he head uh, butt me? Old school, you could head butt. So you always watch it. You watch old school, but Jiu Jitsu, you're always holding the head. Why? Because that head is the fucking howitzer round that hits you in the knockout triangle and knocks you the fuck out. Give me a head butt. Head button. Head button. Try it. Head button. Head button. Do it. So my legs are keeping his head away. Don't really headbutt me or you'll knock me out. If I have <laughs> this guard, headbutt me. Boom! Guard me up. You don't want this. <coughs> See, he's holding my head away. That's head control. Head and hips. Hold my hands. Close your eyes. Block the headbutt and the strike. This is a guard. I can't headbutt him, I can't hit him. Keep your eyes closed. Pull your heels into your own butt. You're gonna headbutt. Yes. That's a closed guard. Controlling my hands, my head, and my hips. What happens in sport, we lose that because we know he can't punch us anymore. We all do. We don't worry about it. I grab those hands. I can roll my guard and I can plane my guard. I'm moving out of the way. I plane over on one side. I'm going to slide my hand up his arm. Slap me. <coughs> I'm going to grip the lapel, slap me. I'm going to cast it open so I can see the label of his gi. Before 
Every gee looked like a fucking NASCAR ad. You had to see who made it by looking inside. I want to see the size and manufacturer of his gi. I'm going to pull this out right now because it's bugging the shit out of me. Thanks. So again, hands, head, and hips. I plane my body and I control that hand. Because if he can punch me, he can choke me, he can pass me. I cast the lapel open. I reach, blocking my knockout, a triangle. Overhand right knee. I reach as deep the fuck as I can. With my hand like, hey! <laughs> deep! <laughs> and I reach past the midline of the gi. Slap me in her hand. So I'm avoiding the strike. Then, like a rope, I'm going to pull in and I'm going to put my head onto the other side of his body. Slap me. Blocking my knockout triangle. If his chin is up, I'm going to reach underneath and start my under choke to where I can touch fingers is my goal. I want to touch fingers. Because this hand right now is fucking killing me, I'm not going to stick it under there. Instead, I'm going to do the overhand version. But right, I'm going to massage his face with my arm, <laughs> guiding it into the choke. I'm going to reach up, grab some cloth, or hook the armpit. I'm going to pull both elbows into his sternum and bring myself back midline. So I want to choke with my hips, not my grips. <laughs> I want to punch with my hips, not my knuckles. Hands and hips, blocking that strike, casting open. Hey, reach deep. If I think it's in there enough, it's fucking not. Get it in there deep. Setting my elbow into his sternum as I cross midline. Massage his face into the choke. Reach up, bring my elbows in, and choke. Can you even just choke right here. Choke right here. Choke right here. Hands, head, and hips. Look over there. Look over there. You fucking can't. <laughs> look over there. You can't look anywhere. Control that head. Control that head. Controlling the head. Control this head and you will choke his neck. Got it? Do it. Just a little adjustment. Pinch your knees, Chris. Sometimes. Sometimes. Just what do you, whatever you need. But I don't want to hold it all right there so, so you know where all my game is. Right? That's the elusive part, right? <laughs> I don't want to throw my farthest range shot so you know where it is, right? I want to throw it head and hips. I can't move my hands. Yes. Now cast it open. Now, now play your body over that way, way over the side. Yes. It's super deep. Ridiculously deep. Now drop your elbow into my shirt. Ooh, and pull your head over that way. All right. Robert is not squeezing on me. He's holding my hips in a little containment field. <laughs> Only when I react is he not letting me do what I want to do. Okay, he's controlling those hands. He plans his body over the side and he's maintaining contact. Or as Hickson says, a connection. There's a connection there. He's maintaining that. Right? And then he's casting the lapel open so it's easy to reach. Because if he pulls it taut and tries to slide his hand up, which I know you all fucking do, it's hard. Because you're trying to pull him down and choke him at the same time. Do it. Pull me down, choke him. You're fighting your own shit. So instead, he planes his body and he casts it open. And he reaches the fuck deep. Right? Look how deep that is. It's pulling on the lab of my key over here. Holy shit. 
And then when he sends his elbow into my sternum and cuts to the other side, it's like the track tap, I'm half choked. If he wants the under choke, I'm blocking it. You reach up underneath, there, you get the under choke. Right? Yes, sir. If you fuck it up, I'm gonna punch you in your thighs. Right? Fucking in there. You want Thai massage? <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> because when you're in guard and you're stuck on the ground, you, you forget about movement, right? We get stuck just doing this. But if we're here in a stand-up fight and all we have is a choke, go. That's all you get is a choke. All you get is a choke. Nothing else. Nothing else but a choke. So I'm slowly working in my first grip. So the first grip is the key. The first grip is the key. You want that first grip. I'm locking it in. In my stance, I'm staying nice and upright. Now I'm getting in my second time. <laughs> Doesn't matter <have> time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Slowly working in the side group. When I think I got it, that's when I'm going to use my hips. I'm going to sink in my hips and start pushing my hips into the trunk. I'm going to do it again. Fucking kill him on arthritis. Okay? Only chokes are standing on them. Nothing guard, nothing leg. So it's all right. You reach out here. I can do it. Can you guys watch too? In the drill, then afterwards, just because we're not. You add arm locks. Chokes and arm locks only. No legs. Fuck you. <laughs> so, we're reaching over, don't choke, you see I can arm walk too, right, but nothing else. So then, when you're in guard, you think that same way, that same way I'm thinking. How do I get enough neck where I can choke? Controlling that head, controlling those arms, controlling that head. Hips alive, hips alive, right? Hips alive. Make sense? Yeah. Keep doing it. <laughs> what we're doing right now is the primitive would be just reach up and choke the shit out. This is like classical, step by step, the art of the Jiu Jitsu. What is the art, you ask? I knew you would. The art is, how do I control and submit my opponent in that order, utilizing the least amount of athletics and attributes, and the maximum amount of leverage, knowledge, cunningness, and guile. That's the art. Well, what's the sport, you ask? I knew you'd ask me. The sport is, how do I control and submit my opponent within the man-made rules of the venue of the game, utilizing all of my jiu-jitsu experience and knowledge and the maximum amount of my athletic ability? That's the sport. And the street is, leave that up to your fucking imagination. Because we think street, I don't train street. Because it quickly devolves into eye gouging, punch him in the dick, all that other shit, right? So, but I do think that way. I think it all the time. But at a group level, personally, I don't train anything a street. I keep that for small groups and one-on-ones because there's a dynamic that can happen. Now, if you're a cop and you're instructing a bunch of fucking cops, it's another story and all that stuff. But I personally don't teach what I call street but jiu-jitsu. Some people say, oh, Chris Howard, he instructs that old school street style. I, I, I don't think I do. But I instruct a style in which I'm always thinking about its application in the street. <coughs> Even when I uh, compete in a sport match, part of my brain is consciously aware when what I'm doing or what's happening, if I'm winning or losing the street fight. 
Sometimes your hand can get raised. And I won the fight, but I'll think, oh, fuck, I lost the street fight. Right? Maybe I spent eight minutes of the match bottom half guard. And it's raining fucking knuckles. And I'm staring face up in a knuckle storm. And I'm trying to avoid them, but ultimately, I'm not winning the fight. And when there's a minute left, I get some fucking awesome sweep, and I win the fight, and I jump up and down like I'm the Olympic champion. Which is another absurdity of modern culture, right? <laughs> Where am I going with this? Oh, the next fucking technique. So, having said that, there was a period of time in which I would instruct and I would say, everything I teach wearing the gi better work no gi too. I've since completely abandoned that line of thought. I fight with what I have. When I go no gi, I'm playing the no gi game. And there are areas of no gi game which are superior to gi game. It's slippery and you need good fucking timing. There are areas of the gi, it's sticky, there's more but control. The math is higher but you gotta move a little slower or you'll miss a calculation, right? You fight the environment I'm in. I used to get so mad in the olden days, I would ref these no gi matches and fuckers are grabbing onto shorts. And I'd be like, if you wanna fucking do cloth grips, you go fight in the gi division. Get your fucking hand off this, uh, off this fucking Speedo or whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> trying to give him a Melvin. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, modern, I'm attacking here. Our next attack, right? I'm going to reach up and I grab that grip. Controlling him around. Just like I'm moving my hand around the steering wheel, I'm going to slide it around back to here. And I want that grip right here. My other hand, I'm going to shift, I'm over here, punch me. The other hand, the other hand, still blocking. This hand can shove in his neck as well, don't tap. I'm controlling his head, right? Controlling that head. I'm going to release that grip and I'm going to reach up and I'm going to match my grip right there. Boom. My elbows control his head. Look over there. Look over there. Okay. Why, why not? Okay. Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to throw his head over the side here first. I'm throwing it away. Not because I don't like him. But sometimes you got to throw things away. you got a clean house. That's a bad one. Then I'm going to lift my elbow up and transfer my grip. And I'm going to find the sweet spot minus my arthritis to where I'm pushing against his neck, and I'm pulling this hand like a rip cord this way with my shoulder, and I'm dropping my elbow this way. So when I get that, boom. Make sense? <coughs> Here. Ooh, I'm trying to attack, maybe he's reaching a little block. What he's doing, he ducks his head or get that grip. I grip, punch him. He goes a little bit of posture up on me right there. Make that grip transfer. Control the head. Cast his head off over the side if I can. Ah. Transfer right here. Suck my hips in midline. <clears throat> Choke him, sorry. You guys got that? Yes, sir. Add this because we're running low on time. And if I taught you guys three moves, you'd go, that seminar was fucking bullshit. And you talk shit about me on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to another topic just real quick. <laughs> There's two big things that we fear. The unknown and shame. That's what we fear. That's why when you walk out in a match or in the cage or whatever it is, you're fearing the unknown. What the fuck's gonna happen? You can't predict it. So it scares the shit out of you. <coughs> Somebody even set the fight up for you. You're completely out of control. 
You're completely out of control. And you fear shame. There's a natural instinct that says, if I lose, I'm gonna be ashamed. This all is, it's bullshit, but it's always there. Great manipulators use that to well, control. Abusers, whatever, they use shame, right? So get the fuck over it. I got over mine. I'm kidding. I'm still dealing with it at night. <laughs> what were you? Oh yeah, our second one. I'm gonna reach up, I get that grip. He's going into posture, he's moving around. I'm gonna get my next grip, I'm going to posture. I want it just enough where I'm pulling the taut on his neck. And I'm gonna use this to open and turn just that way we didn't were standing up so I can reach and grab that grip. Controlling that head. Getting that uh, opposite grip, right there. Controlling that head, moving around. Maybe you can open up, take the back. Get that grip, move around. No, I got that. Climb it up to get the arm. He retracts his arm. Shut that head over there. Controlling the head, underpin. Right? Get that grip afterwards. Here. Slap me. Blocking those slaps. Grip. Grip. Roll it open. Punch him in his throat. Control that head. Reach. Grip. Control that head. Look over there. Can't. Cast it away. Choke. Cast it away. Close it. Back. Right? Do it. That's kind of like your modern gi, the choke of the game, right? I mean, was, there's like three more fundamental chokes from the lapel with guard, but we're going to move on to what I call the more modern game. So that's a classical, now we're moving into modern. Postmodern is like fucking Barambolo 50-50 um, with spray paint on it. I promised people double inverted Barambolo today, just so you know. <laughs> I kind of know how to do one, but I don't know how to teach it. <laughs> But when I'm rolling, I, I feel where it is and, and I can kind of do it. It is actually a pretty cool thing. And it, it's, it came from the Elahiva guard back take, the, when people would counter it, it became the way that you would reinvert to get with the back. It's actually pretty cool. It would happen off of scrambles and somebody found out what it was and they canonized it. Almost like half guard, used to be how you would get to half passing first and then pass, people were spending so many, so much time there, it isolated it enough to become a canonized position. And then people think it's fucking religion, like everything else. Jesus Christ. All right, so we're here. And I don't want to offend anybody who's religious, because I love Christmas. <laughs> Uh, everything about it. God, I love Christmas. Trace. Everything about it. And I grew up non-religious. And for years, I thought Santa Claus was the little baby Jesus' grandpa. <laughs> Who else the fuck would he be? Press your way off to Jitsu. Sorry, I'm way off. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. But we're in a new age of postmodern politics. <laughs> Offending people is the new norm. <laughs> all right. Just offend them fucking all. Jesus. All right. So again, we don't want his shit all in here tucked up. And just because it's, it's hard. If it is in there, 
Again, I fucked up, but if I need it out, I crossed the wrong side. There's no label on that thing. That's cool. Okay, I'm here. I'm gonna reach in like a punch because I want to grab hold of that tail and I want to start getting this tail out of the gi. I want this tail out of the gi. Ideally, I want both of these grips here to where I'm holding his hips in so the gi is accomplishing the same thing as my closed legs. Move around, back up. This is holding him the same way my ankles are. Freeing my ankles up a little bit. He goes a little into posture here, because he, he, he doesn't want to be down. What I'm gonna do is I'm, 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 in essence, I'm shifting one of these through to pull more tail out. Look at that. You would think they fucked up in Pakistan. <laughs> they really sewed that fucker wrong, right? That dude must have been nodding off on heroin. <laughs> Or making a fucking bomb vest. <laughs> Something they fucked up. But I want to get a lot of tail right here. I want enough to where I can slap him across his face. <laughs> and I'm going to shift and I'm going to hold this with two hands right here. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to push it open over here. Way over there. And I'm going to switch this grip. I'm going to shoot my hand through and Ezekiel choke him. Second one I'm going to do is I whip it up over here and I'm just going to capture his head here and Ezekiel choke him. Next one I'm going to push it across here. Loop it over and choke him. Next one I'm going to push it across here, release, loop it over and choke him. Okay? Reach in if you got it, reach down and punch. Start pulling these things out. Controlling over his arms. Controlling his hips. Get one side longer. Choke up on that grip. And start attacking the neck. By guiding and controlling his head. Switching the grips. I'm fucking this up because I'm on my bad side. Okay, that'll be the first one. The next one you're gonna do, well, do that one first. All those ones, okay? The key is in the belt and you can't get the back of the gi out. You've managed to punch and you pull out. That's all right because here's where you're pulling his, his hips in, right? And I don't want to switch it all off because if I can't use this as a choke, he's got good posture and stuff. There is a whole other game. We start off, off just by having this. Now I'm opening up and I'm, I'm enabling more of a grip, right? But for right now, Get that thing the fuck out back there to where you can, and, and, and be a nice partner where I, I can get one side really long. That's all you gotta do. Just get one side really long, choke up on that grip. Get there first. Then you can start playing with your chokes. Make sense? And then I'm going to show you guys some really cool other shit if you hurry and learn this. Okay, hurry up. Right? Let's get this. The first one I'm going to teach is wait, what is I'm here? I'm going to push off over here. Switch the thing. Second one I'm going to teach is I'm going to wrap. This around this way, and either switch grip or or I'm, I'm bringing it right up here. Just trying to gauge. Sometimes I'll loosen that so I can go under as well. 
sometimes just old, right? If they get that, everything else is easy. Everything else is done. Yep. Well, just to remind you before it's done. Okay. Because, um, yeah, that's good. So, what really I would want to do right now, I think, which we book could do is roll. Do you think that we go back to our basic choke? But we've got the tail options now too, right? And most of you, four years ago, if I taught this shit, it was new avant-garde and cool. Now everybody fucking knows it already. So I don't even want to show that whole game where you know you reach up because you guys all know this now. I know you do. So we're not going to do that, okay? Um, what I was going to show, and, and hold, 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 hold a little more posture, I, you also have well, good posture. Good, when they have high posture, a lot of times here I do the punch choke, which works one time on everybody. <laughs> one time. It'll only work once. It works, right? The next time, now you know it's coming. See, and he starts to counter. And off of here, just like our shrimp, we go into our sweep. Simple sweep. The simple sweep is not a multi-step move. A right cross is not a multi-step punch. But people do that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. They make their right cross into three distinct readable steps. And then everybody knows it's coming. It's better to have a shitty right cross well-timed than a perfect right cross in three distinct steps ill-timed. Correct? Same thing on a sweep. If I'm here and I do these multiple steps, hold your base. Yeah, there's fucking nothing there. I imagine that I'm on a huge ass fucking wave and it's a shallow reef. I get one chance to take off and stand up. If I fuck that up, I'm a fucking scab for two months. So if, if I fuck that, I want to choke, he goes into posture, I go from here to here in one step. Hold your base. I start a directional pull over the top. My hips are in the sweet spot. And every board on every wave has its own sweet spot. And every grappler and every base has its own adjusted sweet spot. The directional pull starts. Hold your base. And I'm pulling him on a pivot on his knee. Hold your base. To where he's pivoting on his knee. And then there's a slight scissoring action of my legs as I pull him over my head into my sweep. If I do this, hold your base. It's not going to work. Ugh. Try to get my hip out. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I want to do this one. It's not going to work. Hold your base. Here's the spot. There's the sweet spot right there. I feel it. There it was. I'm going to feel that spot. Hold your base. I miss that spot. He adjusts. I pull myself up. He adjusts. Nice move. Can't move him. Move me. Hold your base. Hold that base. That knee's right here. This leg's right here. My hip. Power. Hold that base. That's sweet. That's spot. Get the sweet spot. Find it. Hold your base really well. Boom. Boom. Won't go. Just sweep. Because if we can do that first, then we're going to go into tail guard sweep. When you get this, get like it. You got your arm drag to the choke. Yes. I got my sweep. Adjust the lapel. 
But we gotta get that sweep down first. And if you fuck it up, I'm gonna punch you in your fucking thighs. You want time massage? I did. Me too. <laughs> I want one so bad. Okay, you guys got that? Let's do it. You see my hip, there's no sweep. It's just not there at all. This leg, absolutely, it, it's a knee shield. And it has to stay here no matter how much he leans on that leg. This leg must stay there. If I weaken it, I'm not going to get this way, okay? Keep your knee shield. You adjust your hip. You adjust your hip. You want that just where all his weights on that leg. Make sense? Okay, keep going. Right there, yes. Now, look at that. Now, look at that, just like right there. Now, look, you see, I'm going to back out, right? Yes, you're pivoting me on any by pulling me up and over. Oh. <coughs> Come back one more time. So I'm here. I'm in good posture. I'm in good pace. You go right in the sweet spot. So I'm, I back up, right? Rise yourself up. Move your butt. But first, no. Right yourself. Now, yes. Don't rise that leg. No, no, hold on, hold on. Look, I got a base again. I got a base again. Hip out, hip out, hip out. Yes, don't look. Do you see you brought that fucking leg up? Yes, yes, yes. Now, pull me that way. Yes, yes. Now, no, come back. Now, the last one, when you pull me here, scissor. Yes. <laughs> And it allowed me just this little elbow shift. I'm getting ready to stand up. Right there, right in the sweet spot. One fucking time. He bases out. I adjust. Make sense? Go. Classical but jiu jitsu with our modern but jiu jitsu. And then, if you want to go super a postmodern into a lot of these other new various forms of connecting and controlling the body, that's what I call postmodern. In 20 years, that will be a fundamental thing that all the white belts know. The Ewehi Vagar got me purple to black belt. And there was a glorious time where a lot of people, they just didn't fucking know. And you could feel it instantly. Oh, these guys don't know this. And when I would be up in Oregon, I would teach it all the time. So all my Oregon guys learned it, felt it really early on. And then really, until Cabrina and Mendez brothers blew it up, there was a lot of schools that they just didn't do it. And it was great when you would feel that. And then other people, you'd feel right away, okay, they're a school that does Eliheva Guard. Spider Guard, I used to love, until it just hurts my fucking hands so much. It just fucking kills me to do that shit. Save that shit for matches, right? Then I'll do these inverted sleeve grips. All grips, if I hold this tight, escape that grip. <coughs> Escape that grip. See, I want it loose. I want to have a feel of moving around. Escape the grip. And then my other hand backs it up. You see, now I have a good escape of the grip, right? And I can use that as a good tool independent, right? Chris, so hand. The, the hand is tight, but the arm is loose. You allow the grip to move without compromising the grip. Yes. Okay. And at the same time, Whatever grip I have, I'm looking for everything else. Any shift of base, anything I'm going to be after, independently of what's happening with my hands. When you're boxing and you're boxing well, your footwork is almost independent of your handwork, right? When you're drumming, your footwork becomes independent of your handwork. And it's a hard thing for our brains to do, really hard. 
Because we are dumb. And we're wired dumb. As smart as you think you are. Some people even think they're the smartest guy in the room. And there's enough people that will make them the nominee of a major party. I'm kidding. Sorry. God, I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. I meant Bernie Sanders. I'm kidding. <laughs> what were we doing? <laughs> <laughs> See, clearly I'm stupid enough to be in politics. Because obviously it requires stupidity. And old enough. And old enough. Ooh, nice. Because <laughs> <laughs> the one thing you get when you're old is crotch. What does that mean? No, are you? Oh, yes. This sweet, right? So I'm grabbing these tails. And this blends in. So, what makes a guard good? The four pressures of guard are, number one is A, B, C. A always, B, B, C choking. Always be choking. Always be threatening that neck. Always a, a, a sincere, legitimate, attack on his neck. At the same time, if there is an extension of an arm, I'm going to take it. If he leaves an arm back, I'm going to triangle it. If his base isn't there, I'm going to sweep it. I'm going to take his back. So, put it simply, you have the threat of s s submission, right? One, I have the threat of a sweep. I have the threat of a back attack. And the fourth dimension of time and space is I literally make him have to hold me in guard or I'm coming up. If he's not holding me down, I'm coming up. And that multiplies those first uh, three. If I'm here and all I have is a one-dimensional guard attack, go, defend. Just, all I want is a choke. Now I'm gonna add a dimension two, a sweep. Improves my choke. Now I'm gonna add three, a lock. Don't get locked, don't get locked, don't get locked. Improving my sweep. Right? Now I'm gonna add the dimension four, which is fuck you, hold me down. <laughs> Go. Now he has to hold me down. That is what really opens up my entire game. Hold me down. Now I get that arm easy. Hold me down. Right? It's that I'm gonna come on top. I'm gonna come on top. I'm gonna come on top and I'm gonna take necks and arms and sweeps on the way. Not I'm gonna choke you. Not I'm gonna arm lock you. Not I'm gonna sweep you. It's hold me down, I'm coming on top, and on the way, I'm grabbing whatever I can. Right? So this sweep here, you combine it with your whole game. So I'm here, I reach deep, I feed and I lock that arm. Escape your arm. I keep that right in the armpit. See, I'm combining it. Making you have to hold me down. Hold me down or I'm gonna mount you. See, now I'm off on the back. Right? So when you drill this, don't just do this. How did he say do that again? Like this, oh yeah, don't lower your leg, remember? If you lower your leg, magic sweep. Reach up, loop it around, 
Let's go. my favorite sweets. One of my favorite sweets when I was young. Because I use this. He tries to, he, he flattens me out. Guys, so you reach up deep. Grip, you miss it with Kimura, or you grab right here. The V in the Gi is also a good spot. Grab the V in the Gi. Lift that up. Hold your base. Come back, hold your base. I go to sweep, flatten out. See, I reach, I grip. Pass my guard. Hold your base. Hold your base, hold your base, hold your base. Now, it's all about making him have to hold me down. He has to hold me down. There. Now I'm back in. Yep. But keep me honest. Still make him have to hold me down. Daily Eagle Guard. Make me, make him have to hold me down. Now. Come up, right? Make sense? Okay. Practice that and then we'll switch gears, right? Go. And I don't have my riddle in. So I'm locking him here. If I don't hold it at all, he'll just move his arm out and escape, right? So when I'm in here, I'm holding his arm. And my ideally off of here, my arm lock one, as you see here, I got the wing arm one, right? So I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling, I grip, because that, that's the wing. Then it comes quick, it goes slow. Yep, you start here, you start. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I start here, and I'm pulling him into my guard too, right? I start here, he grabs. Look how I come right over here, and I'm just making that shift. You miss it, I'm going back to choke. Always be choking. Always. If you can't close, you say my moves are shit, you're shit. Hit the bricks, pal, because you're going out. Who's <laughs> playing Jerry's one? Yeah. <laughs> you know what it takes? To submit, guys, brass balls. You think this is hard? It's from the movie. This is, you, you guys are, you're as bad as the people in the fucking Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get fucking punched. <laughs> we got that grip, right? <coughs> If he starts escaping his arm, you let it escape, and you're back into your choke series, right? Or you re-grip here and hold it up right in there. And what's he gonna do? You go to your, your bad side sweep. I got this neat grip, which actually makes my bad side sweep pretty fucking good. He backs out of that. Rise up. Start making him have to hold you in guard. Making him have to hold you in guard. Sweep him up, right? Right? Make that fucker have to hold you down. Get your boot on the fucking neck. Just don't film it. <laughs> Viral on YouTube. Boot on the fucking neck. What kind of a fucking savage fascist are you? Go! <laughs> Alright, let me use you as lighter too. Okay, so, fundamental magic sweep. You don't want to just start with a magic sweep because you're basically offering a pass. He's going to reach up, hook the back of my D, Sao Paulo pass me, whatever he's got, right? It's not going to work. This happens off of my sweep. I'm trying to sweep over here, and he flattens that leg out, he sprawls on it, okay? I have to keep my other options alive, but pretty much I'm reaching around to put my armpit 
on top of his shoulder here. And I'm locking it in. He has the, the, the belt, I grab belt. You can grab cloth, you can grab pants. A lot of times I'll just put grip here. Reach back and I lay grip. And I'm gonna sit in kind of a whirling motion when I rock back. So I'm rocking back and lifting them here, maintaining that hook. Hold your base. So I'm rocking them up here, right? Let me just grip here. God, this hurts my arms right now. Let me just, you know, just fucking pretend. <laughs> so see, I'm lifting up here. Hold your base well, really well, really well. He holds his base really well, and I can't go. You shift down, right? You're gonna shift down. He holds his base. He feels my shift. You're gonna lock that one, right? Hold a little more on right there, right? Watch. I'm gonna turn back in the guard by extending my leg, and then I'm gonna rotate my hip through. See, and then as I turn, you got him on that side of the seat. He backs out more into base. You back in and up and around. Back into that seat. He just lay that fucking leg bar. Right? He shifts his head back over to the other side. You go back into the chair. Right? Right, you guys? Let's do that and then remind me so I don't forget the next will be the lapel of back tape. Okay? Boy, is that a lost start. Mm -hmm. That's the command. Yes. So you we're going, we're chi sound here. We're, we're, I'm, I'm feeling my knees. Ah! Right? <laughs> Bruce Lee shit. So when I'm here, I don't want to just leave my arm here. Just like when I'm here, I don't want to leave my arm here where you can just roll over it. I want to roll over it. I want to have a feel of a connection. Like Wing Chun Kung Fu. Right? A feel of where, you know, I can work it where I can get my shot. So my leg, my knee shield, it's doing that. So roll on it, move it around. See, I'm moving that knee shield around to feel which sweep I'm going to get, which pull I'm going to get. Right? Make sense? I'm going to show this last one and then we'll drill all of them, okay? The last one, again, we get this thing out. This is the game. I can't say I invented it, but I sure discovered it. Maybe somebody else did too. But I'm in here, I reach around, and I, I, I want to grab that V of the gi, or the wedge of the gi. And I'm reaching up under my leg and reaching as far back as I can under my leg to grab cloth. I'm trying to lock it into my leg. If I can assist over here, I'm going to assist. There's the V of the gi. If I can get that grip, all the better. And I'm gonna pull that cloth up, and I'm gonna use this leg now where I can move his body with my leg. And that's gonna start opening me up for all kinds of other stuff. So I'm holding on, I'm gripping here, he's on my leg. We block the triangle. He's blocking the triangle. Block the choke, you can't right now, huh? Now I go to the back, right? So you can only block a couple things at once. Now you're back to arm lock, you're, you're trying. Escape that. That walk back to my choke. He's blocking that. Back to here. I switch my grip. Lock it onto my leg. Bring my whole leg's weight on him. Look how much weight I got going on. All the way up and down, he's locked my triangle again, and you're locked into me. Stand up. Art. Right? 
and I'll start playing the other games. Then, play it on this side. Reaching back, grabbing it, way up over here as much as I can. See? Cross it out. But you also, you gotta show back in the other dual pelvis. I'm walking here, and I get here and here. I forgot to add this. This is where my ADD got in the way. We're working on here, grabbing this. Start all over again in an attempt to master the basic fundamental concepts of the art of the Jiu Jitsu. And as I say, that art has rapidly evolved from when I began, and what we do now is what I call Japanese origin. Brazilian modified, American influenced with Jiu Jitsu. That's what we're doing now. I think the only crime he committed was failure to report what he saw.